Welcome. So it is uh, the 15th of November. We're doing fan through the back today. So a quite straightforward, uh, relatively simple movement. So we'll be able to do a lot of review of the movements leading up to it. So Laura and Dita, we're in the middle of the second, sort of the, the early third of the second section. So let us begin. Hey, Dita, good to see you. So let us begin with uh, a few minutes of standing practice. Uh, so we'll do uh, empty stance again today. So stand feet shoulder width apart, a little bit wider if you want. Bend the knees. Make sure your back goes straight down, arms rounded in front of your chest, about sh chest height. And we'll start with your posture checks. So feel your head lifting up. Your head is light and energetic from the neck. Everything else is hanging down. So imagine your head is glued to the ceiling and everything else is hanging down. Shoulders are sinking, elbows are dropping. Then feel your chest absorbed. Do that by expanding your elbows away from the shoulder blades. And make that circle of the arms go all the way around. Feel the fingertips pulling away from the wrists, from the elbows. And the fourth one, relax the waist. Feel your hips dropping straight down so that your lumbar spine, your lower back is opening and ex expanding. So not scooped in like a duck. And as we stand here, we use this to train our posture, but we also do our breathing. So you can do those posture checks. And also observe as you breathe in, your belly expands. And as you breathe out, it contracts. I'll stop talking for a little while. Let's just stand and get into our body, train our posture. And particularly if you don't have somebody like me talking all the time, it also is a good way to help your mind calm down. So let's go back to our empty stance. Shift your weight to one side, open one of your toes to the corner. Let's go into an empty stance, heel touch. So open the chest to the corner. You're looking to the straight direction. Torso is folded forward slightly. Now we did that last week. Now this week I want you to add something. So feel push and support. Feel as if your heel is pushing against your back foot and your back foot is pushing against your heel. So the feet are pushing up away from each other. There's a dynamic tension between them. And this is a key part of what we call rooting. But don't lose your posture. So make sure your head is up, shoulders down, chest absorbed, waist relaxed. You want to be open and relaxed. Everything is extended. Let's change to the other side. Pick up the front foot, put it down to 45 degrees, shift to the other side, center line two sides with the heel. Shift forward, 30% on the front foot, 70% on the back. So your center of gravity is over your back foot. Weight over the whole back foot. Make sure your chest is to the corner, but your head is looking straight forward, your nose specifically, not just your eyes. And feel the push and support. So feel the front foot pushing back and the back foot pushing forward. So this, for example, is the stance we have for raise hands. Last week we did 
needle at C bottom. So let's do an empty stance touching with the ball. So shift your weight back, bring the foot back, change, touch with the ball of the front foot. And now let's just square up the chest because that's the posture that we have in needle at C bottom. We're just going to go forward slightly, but again, now you're feeling the pressure in the ball of the front foot, not the heel, because just the whole ball is touching. And you're 70% on the back foot. Push and support, dung and chung between the feet. Yes, I always think of dung and chung as the comedy duo of Tai Chi. And again, head up. Shoulders down, absorb the chest, relax the waist. And let's change, pick it up, put it down so that that's your new back foot. Pick up front foot, center line, two sides, ball touch, square up the chest, come forward slightly so that you'll make sure that your torso isn't tilted back. And now that you've got a little bit of weight on that front foot, push back with the front foot, push forward with the back foot so that you've got dung and chung, push and support, dynamic tension between the feet. Feel openness. So we say relax the waist, but it's relax everything. And relax means open and extend. And if it gets too hard on your shoulders, you can always Drop your arms completely, or if you want, just hold them down here. If it gets too hard on your shoulders, uh, that's just as good a posture uh, to practice in. Good, so that was a minute on each side. So let's just shift forward, bring the back foot parallel to the front. A little warm up, just since we've been standing. Gently rotate the hips four times in one direction and four times in the other direction. Now we'll loosen the waist, bend the knees so that your hips don't flop around and compromise your knees and turn your chest from one side to the other and let your chest movement move your arms. So this is a waist horizontal waist movement We'll practice waist movement for a couple of minutes. So if you want to use a chair, get your eye on a chair that you want to bring forward. Now let's do the shoulders. So just bend the knees and open the shoulders just to get the blood flowing there. And after we've done this four times, let's just rotate the shoulders in the other direction and do that four times and we're good. Okay, so we'll do our hip openers and our waist practice. And again, I'll show you uh, the exercise, how one can do it with a chair. You don't have to do it with a chair. You can just stand and bend your knees. But if you have any balance issues or you just feel like doing it with a chair, have something to hold on to. So you're going to have your weight on one foot and you're going to open the hip and we're going to do five on each side. So that's one, two, three, and make sure that you're not talking the standing knee. You're opening your hips. The standing knee keeps pointing in the direction of the standing foot. Five, go to the other side. Two, three, and if you can, Four, point your toes as you go around, which is a good habit because when we lift our leg in the form, we always have our toes down to begin with. So that's a good place to get that habit in. Let's do five more on each side. One, two, three, four, five, and the other side. And in a, uh, quite a few weeks from now, we'll start on the kicks and turns. So gradually getting comfortable with 
standing on one leg as you move your legs around will help. Okay, let's do a few waist exercises. Um, I use a hard chair so that my hips aren't flopping around, but you can just stand with your knees bent if you prefer, or else sit on a chair. Yeah, that's great, just the way Rogelio and Yali are doing it are good too. So let's start arms rounded. We'll do the horizontal uh, movement first, which is going from one side to the other. So you're just twisting your spine like a corkscrew. And let's do four. That's three. And the other side. Four. And the other side. Now let's do the chest forward and back. One. Back. Forward. Back. Forward, back, forward, back. And now we're going to go side to side. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. I want to add something with this side to side movement. So you can see, you know, when we when we think about the principles, one of them is practice smoothly and continuously. And so you can see this is not continuous. I go to one side and then I stop and I come back and I stop. So how can I avoid that? And the answer and always in Tai Chi is you go in a circle. So, so we're going to go in a circle. So start at one side and go down and come up. And so just feel like you're a pendulum swinging down and up as you go from side to side. You can also go around the top, so up and down. So now you're going around the top of the curve. And once we've done that a few times, go all the way around. So one, all the way around. Two, three, four. And the other way, one, so if you can, try not to move your hands relative to your chest. Just keep your hands at the same place in front of your chest and move your rib cage rather than moving your hands. Okay, that's enough since I don't know what your conditioning is like. If we do too much, you'll wake up with a sore back tomorrow. So I'll show you where we're going. So let's just start doing, so the, we've done horizontal circles when we horizontal waist movements and then this one you know these the forward back side to side we call vertical you put them together you get mixed so let's start we go to one side we go back to the other side what i want you to do is to go down and around when you get to the corner go up a bit and go down so my hands are it's my chest that's going making so you're painting a figure eight like actually it's an infinity sign in front of you. And this means you can actually go around the corner without stopping. So now go back in the other direction. Now I'm going down across the middle. The first set, I went up across the middle. And so go down and around. And this we call the figure eight. It's a way of keeping a circle when you turn to the left and then come back to the right and stop. Okay. Hopefully we're all nice and warm now. So what we'll do is we'll practice the form, uh, the second section to where we got to last week, which was needle at sea bottom. I'll stop, see if there are any questions. Um, we will be reviewing needle at sea bottom in detail. But questions about any of these movements that we're going to be doing now are good as well. We can review them as well. So I will be using, uh, for Laura and Dita, who actually may remember the red flag. So this is the front of the room. Um, so I will be going in the same direction. If you're facing the screen as the front of the room, I'm going in the same direction as you here. We're going to start in cross hands at the beginning of the second section. I will just call the movements. I won't provide cues at this point. Embrace tiger, return to the mountain.
roll back. Press. Push. Fist under elbow transition. Fist under elbow. Step back, repulse monkey. One, two, three, diagonal flying. Raise hands, step forward. White crane spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Needle at sea bottom. And stop. Okay, so that's where we are in the second section. Are there any questions about any of those things? Good. So actually, let us, um, I will, let's just do this again, and I will just provide some cues, just a few reminders, uh, and then we'll, fo if there aren't any questions after that, we'll focus on needle at sea bottom. So um, I will go in the other direction. So you can, see, if you are watching, you can see another angle. So for me, so front is now towards the screen. So I'm going to start sort of here. It's going to start in cross hands. Okay, make sure that when you cross your arms, you're crossing not at the wrists, but about a third of the way down the forearm. Okay. Embrace tiger, return to the mountain, shift weight to the right, pivot the left heel more than corner, almost to straight. Sit back, drop the right elbow. Now arms circling, open and close, close and step, brush and push. Right foot is inside corner. You're essentially doing a left brush knee. Roll back, shifting weight back, lift the right arm to the shoulder, rotate the left, keep pushing back, connect out with the center of the right forearm. You're in roll back position. Roll to the left side corner. Press, rotating the body, put the left palm on the center of the right forearm, pressing out, move the weight forward. Push, flatten the palms, square the chest in the direction of the front foot, sit back the weight, arms come back in a teardrop shape, keep them shoulder width apart, keep the palms sitting all the way up. Transition to fist under elbow. Shift back the weight, flatten the palms. Separate the arms, forearms stay parallel. Now pull with the left, turn the right foot to the front. Keep going. Now palms back in front of the chest, pushing out to the side. Fist under elbow. Step center line to sides on the diagonal. Connect out with the left arm. Step with the right, grab and pull with the left. Shift your weight onto the right, pull down with the left. Change footwork, heel touch. Lift with the left, punch with the right. Step back, repulse monkey. Shifting back weight, start rotating the left arm. Step back, toe touch, arm out, foot flat, arm in. Now pull with the left hand, strike with the right as you pivot on the right heel. Number two, shift back weight, start rotating the right arm. Step, toe touch, arm out, foot flat, arm in, pull and strike. Number three, shift back weight, start and shifting the arms. When the back foot is flat, the arms in front of the shoulder and now shift your weight to the left, pull and strike. Diagonal flying, shifting weight back, big circle with the arms as you bring your right foot in and then step it diagonally out behind you. With body turning, the right arm goes up, left palm in front of the hips. 
Your right arm is straight but not locked. Palm is up. You're looking over your fingertips. Raise hands. Step forward. Shift forward your weight. Bring the back foot in towards the right. Open. Change footwork. Heel touch. Close the arms with body turning. Right fingertips about eye height. White crane with body turning. Par both arms rotate. Palms facing each other. Now both arms swing. As the arms close, pick up your right foot, put the heel back where it is to the corner, do white crane. Left brush knee with body turning, rotate both arms. Now one arm swings down, one arm swings up, and then up and down. Heel touch when the arms are to the side, brush as the foot flattens, push as the knee bends. Needle at C bottom, shift forward your weight, right arm goes forward and down a bit, bring the back foot in. Now pull, pushing with the left heel up, change footwork to the ball, turn your chest to square, bend at the hips, coming down. In the ending posture, your arm is about 45 degrees, fingertips are vertically down, you're looking in f at the ground about two or three yards in front of you, and stop. Okay. How was that? Any questions about any of those? Great. No questions. Good. Okay. So let us review. And of course, you know, when I say questions, it doesn't have to be a specific question. It could just be, you know, I just, just talk about this movement again. Uh, or you can even just show me the movement. You don't have to remember what it's called. Um, but not seeing anything. Let's keep going. Okay. So we're going to do, I'm just going to review and then we'll practice a few times uh, needle at sea bottom. So the, in the direction that we were going, if the front is over there, let's just review that movement. So we did left brush knee. So we're in left brush knee. The first thing that happens, shift my weight forward. Right hand goes forward and down a bit. The back foot comes into the center line. You're going to shift back your weight, push with the left heel. The right arm is going to pull back, and the left arm is going to come up to about halfway. Then you're going to change footwork from heel to ball. You're going to turn your chest to square, bend your torso. The arm is going to come down, and you're going to finish in that ending posture that we just talked about. So let's do that again. And I'll show it from the other side, and then we'll just. Uh, look at a few of the details. So we were in left brush knee. So yield forward weight, bring the back foot to center line. Pull with the right arm, pushing with the heel. Change footwork, come forward. Make sure you still have that lift in your head and your ending posture is fingertips down. And stop. So let me just remind you of a few things, and then we'll practice it together uh, a few times. So uh, the, the footwork uh, is going from a bow stance to an empty stance, and the way and there's, there's a number of ways to do that. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the back foot in. We're going to push off with the heel and land on the toe. So, uh, you know, there's other ways of doing it. So, for example, when you do, you, you all know the form. So, for example, when you do high pat on horse, you actually bring the front foot in. Here, we're actually bringing the back foot in. And you remember when we do in the first section, hand strum lute, we're pushing off with the ball and changing to the heel. So, hand strum lute, push off with the ball, land on the heel. Here, we're going to push off with the heel and land on the ball of the foot. So that's the difference between that the transition in the first section and this one in the second section. So that's so that's the footwork. Um, the second thing that I want to really focus on is the body movement. And so one of the reasons why we do waist exercises is we use the waist to actually do the movement. So let's just review that. So from here. I'm in a bow stance. I'm going to yield forward. Now I'm pulling on my opponent. So you can see that as I pull, I'm turning my chest open. 
I'm also pushing with my heel, and this is why we use the heel, because I really want to apply a lot of pull here, because they've grabbed my hand. I'm trying to release this hand. So that's why I'm pushing with my left heel and opening my chest here. So you can see now my chest is open. I'm going to change my footwork. Now I'm actually going to turn my chest to square. So from here, when I go down, my chest is going to go back to square. There's actually three things that happen here. We'll focus on the two most important. So the first is from here, the chest comes to square. The second thing is that we actually fold forward. And when we finish, we're with our torso 45 degrees to the vertical. The, you can see my right arm is 45 degrees to the vertical. My fingertips are down. The thing that I want you to pay attention to, is, because it's um, something we all have a lot of trouble with, or at least I do. Um, so I'm going to show you bending forward in two different ways. So here I'm going to I'm going to like pin my elbows to my to my to my ribs, and I'm just going to bend my lower back. So you see, I can actually get my upper, my, 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 torso, my upper arms, I can get things at 45 degrees by bending this part. The other way I can do it is by bending at the joint between my thighs, my femur, and my pelvis. So here I'm connecting here, and I'm actually bending forward like this. And this is what we want to do. We want to bend forward at the hip crease, not at the lower back. What makes it, so for some of us, that's, little, that's looking really nice, Laura. So the, 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 what makes this extra interesting is there are actually two things that happen here. Actually, there are three, but we're, we're talking about the first two. So the first is I'm turning my chest square here. So this is a waist turn. And the second is I'm bending at my thigh hip joint. So these two things are happening at the same time. So I have to coordinate the waist turn with the torso tilt. The third thing for those of you who you know, know the form very well, which is all of you, uh, you can also sink your weight down a bit. So that's the third thing. So for example, if when I'm back here, I change. When I come down, I can actually lower my center of gravity as my chest turns and my torso tilts, you can see I'm actually bending these legs. But don't, pay, don't worry too much about bending the legs at, at the beginning, if this is, if you, and because if you find that your knee is being compromised or that you're shifting your weight forward so that you're 50-50, you've lost the 70-30 that we want for an empty stance. So you need to be 70-30 and then go down. And I don't have very much in my ankle, so I can't actually go down very much here. So I don't actually worry about that. I focus on this movement. The next thing that I want to, the last thing uh, that I want to just remind us of is the arm movements. So we start in uh, hands from loop. Somebody grabs our arm. We yield forward. Then we pull back. So you can see I'm making the cross section of my hand quite small. Uh, Martha Young says, like, like a fish. So that if somebody's gripping you, you know, you can pull it out. Then from here, the hand comes from down to up. So it's about neck height. And, you know, the, the position left to right is not that important. I find it easier to pull out a little bit rather than to pull in, because you want to have your chest sinking, your elbows dropping, and your armpits open. So you're pulling out to about neck height. Now from here, what's going to happen is, what I want you to think about is, if you just push your arm straight forward, if your arm is now horizontal and your chest is vertical, if you now tilt 45 degrees, you can see your arm is at 45 degrees, which is where it should be. So actually, your arm at the end is just going straight forward. 
we're not coming the arm relative to the body is not going down it's not going up it's just going straight out and the last thing that i want you to pay attention to is when we finish the right arm is at 45 degrees but the fingertips are vertical so there's actually a bend in your wrist yes that's very nice laura yeah just like that so let's so, so let's just put all of those things together and let's just practice this a few times i'll just give cues and let's just repeat it a few times so we're in uh, uh left brush knee shift weight forward bring the back foot in we're pushing the left knee open the chest to the right change your footwork chest coming to square bending at the hip crease arm comes down you're looking uh, sort of at the, the floor about three yards in front okay and let's go back into a left brush knee you could just step out with your left leg let's do that again shift weight forward right hand goes down a bit now pulling back with the right hand your left hand comes up about halfway as the right hand pulls up change footwork right arm comes straight out from the shoulders as you bend at the torso and turn the chest square again left brush knee ending posture shift forward weight pushing with the heel open to the back change footwork turn the chest then the torso sink a little bit if you want and finish good i just want to watch you to see if there's anything we should talk about so just keep doing this uh, before we do that, Laura. On your left hand, your left hand is like that. Ah, yes. I can't. I can't see your left hand, but so the the, the answer is, your left hand. <laughs> the left hand is the way that this this down hand almost always is. It's parallel to the floor and the fingertips are pointing straight forward at the end when you're when you're lifting up so here when we start let's say we've done left brush knee so here you can see my my hand is sitting a little bit because i'm actually showing it i'm trying to pull somebody with my left hand so here my palm is sitting as i change and come down you can see my palm is parallel to the ground fingertips forward and the position relative to my knee is just relax your arm bend the elbow slightly bend the wrist slightly so that your palm is horizontal that's where your left hand is make sense okay so just practice on your own for a few times and let me watch you there are a couple of things i noticed um, mostly uh, arms because it's a little bit hard for me to decipher your footwork so i apologize if there are footwork things that i'm missing so um the first one is and actually this is an addendum i don't think you have this problem laura but um so we talked about the left hand position what it looks like but the other thing that i should have been clear about is it's by the side of your body so let me do it facing you so I'm going to shift forward, I'm going to pull open. So you can see this left hand is sort of in this, this plane here. Change footwork and as I come down, it stays in the plane. So my left, my left hand is just in the plane of my shoulder and my right hand is in the plane of my right shoulder. So they're quite separated here. They're not towards the center line. Um, the next thing that i noticed that i just want to remind you of and actually in a, in a few minutes i will ask susan to join me to, we'll just do the applic the next application so we'll talk again about this one but um when again it's left hand this is the day of the left hand so as you pull back with the right the left lifts so it comes up to about 45 degrees master young is about halfway because you know when you when you start with left brush you can see it's sort of vertical and as you pull it comes up to here and then as you come down it goes back to being vertical 
So make sure that you don't leave your left hand here. It actually comes up as you pull. The third thing that I noticed that I just want to uh, remind us of is when we pull, we're trying to release and make sure, and again, this is a, a, this may be a camera angle thing, make sure that you don't leave your right hand in front of your body. So I'm next to the camera here, I guess. Um, so when I pull back, I'm going to pull back to here. I'm not just going to pull back to here. It looked like some of you were sort of pulling back to here. So make sure that it's back here, palm opposite the neck, lower back. Um, and make sure that you have a nice pull open. Yeah. And I think that was it. So this is coming along really nicely. And I, the, the thing that I really liked, I see all of you doing really well, is the, the weight transition. So uh, uh, pushing back with the heel, picking it up, putting back the ball. So you're actually feeling this wave going back and then the wave going forward. That's, that's coming along really nicely. So if I can get my beautiful assistant, we will, uh, let, me just review, let me just review again uh, how, what this movement is about to just to confirm what we were talking about. Okay, I think it's easier this way around. Yeah, so uh, Susan's gonna grab, I think uh, it's that hand, yeah. So, so Susan's grabbed me, what am I, what am I gonna do? Um, let's try this hand, yeah. You were right the first time. So I'm gonna try and release this hand. So she's got a good grip. So what I'm going to do, this is why I need to root with this uh, left heel. I'm going to put my right hand behind her, um, this is the left, behind her hand, and I'm going to pull. So I'm going to try and release here. And so let's turn it around, and you can see, when I said I wanted this left hand to show a grab, you can see I'm actually, it's actually here, behind, uh, come all the way up to the camera, I think. So it's actually right here. And so you can see there's actually a bit of a, a bit of a kink in her wrist when I put this hand here. That if you have a a, 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 a collaborator or a victim at, at home, try this. It's much easier to pull against the bending arm. So that's why this is showing this push. Now, the thing to remember is when we demonstrate it in the form, we don't have our hands here. We have our hands here because it's stylized but it's this movement that actually shows this hand coming up. So that's the first, so, so actually uh, needle at sea bottom is, is, is two movements. It's like plan A and plan B. So plan A, Susan pulls, I try and release. If it fails, if she just follows, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a wrist lock. And now I'm going to push and I, I'll, I'll come closer in a second. I'm going to come down. That's why I'm coming down to release the wrist. So let's turn around and come closer to the screen to just show you the mechanics of this. So Susan's grabbed me here. I'm going to come up. I'm going to be on the other side here. So you can see the shape of the hand that you have at the end of the form. And her wrist is now really uncomfortably turned and so i just do the the least dropping <laughs> she'll get me later uh, but the other thing that you can do to make that work even better is actually bend her elbow and press down with this hand on the on her on her elbow so i'm pressing down on the wrist and the elbow at the same time and so when you're showing so here this is the first pull now, when you come down, this hand is doing something. It's actually pushing down on the elbow. We're showing it at the side, but it's actually, this hand is also doing something. There's also an energy point. Now let's talk about the movement we're gonna do today, uh, which is uh, fan through the back. So she's gonna grab me. 
Um, is this a good side? Let's try the other side. Yeah. So there's another, there's, there are always multiple ways of doing this. So one of the things I can do is I can actually catch her hand here and turn. So I'm going to catch the hand and turn and pull out. So let's go back a little bit here. So I'm going to lift, push this hand and lift, then I can strike to the armpit here. So when we do fan through the back, which we'll do in a few minutes, there's this lifting movement, and that's what we're doing. We're locking the elbow in, turning the arm, and then striking and pulling. So strike and pull here. So that's why that's fan through the back. Any questions? Okay, let's practice that. Thank you. Okay, so let's do fan through the back a few times, then we'll refine the details, and then we'll practice it again uh, a few times. So I'm going to imagine the front is, my screen is on this side. We've done needle at sea bottom. So we're, this, we're in needle at sea bottom ending posture. And don't worry, don't go, you don't have to go too, too low because it's going to be hard work to do it over and over again. So one, raise the arm, rotate the arm. When it gets to horizontal, touch with the left palm. Keep pushing. When you get to the top, step out with the left foot. Forward and back, strike. You finish with the torso vertical and the hand just over the temple. Let's do it the other way around. So we're end of needle at C bottom. Here. Start straightening the torso. Rotate the right hand. When it's about horizontal, the left palm touches the forearm. When it gets to the top, step. Separate forward and open. Again, we're at the ending posture of needle at C bottom. Start straightening the torso. Rotate the right hand when it's about horizontal touch with the left palm. Keep pushing it up. Step out. Heel touch when the arm's at the, at the end. Separate the arms, one forward, one back. And stop. So now let me just talk through a few of those things, and then we can practice them again. So um, the, the first thing that we'll talk about is footwork. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about, just remind you again, what the applications are. And then I want to talk about the body and the posture, particularly at the end, which is important. So with needle at sea bottom, we were in an empty stance ball touch. This is just going to go back into a bow stance. So this is footwork that you know very well. For example, um, when you were doing white crane and you step out into left brush knee, it's the same footwork. So this, so that fundamental footwork going from a boast, empty stance to a bow stance. So that's the, that's the footwork. The second thing to think about is what, what is the application or what are the techniques, the martial art techniques? Essentially what we're doing is there is a pull with the upper arm and a strike with the lower arm. So essentially one's going to go back and one's going to go forward. That's the separation. That's where the power comes from. The thing that I want that that I want to focus on third is the body posture. So let's I'll I'll, I'll have the front to be here. So if we start, we've done needle at C bottom. I'm going to lift, step, open. So now we want to pay attention to what is our posture here. You can see I'm in a bow stance, so 60-40, but I'm in a bow stance with my torso vertical. So this is like single whip. It's not like press or push. Torso is vertical, and in order to get the torso vertical with the waist relaxed, you need to open your hip more than corner. So make sure that when you when when you're up here, your Hips are actually quite open to the corner. Your torso is vertical. 
you're doing a strike out. Now, from here, we can talk about the arm position for the right arm. So now let's get into the arm movement. Let's just talk about the closing posture since I've got my arm out here like a chicken. So ending posture, you just bring your hand in. So if you've got single whip, the back arm is to the corner. Keep the upper arm roughly where it is and just bring the palm forward. You're finishing with the palm just a bit higher than the temple and about fist width from the temple. So this is where your arm finishes. Now, the key thing about this, you remember when we were doing standing practice, we were doing uh, shoulder sinking, elbows dropping, right? So we were trying to get this absorbed chest feeling. You can see that, you know, my elbow is above my shoulder here, but it's not like this. It's like this. So try and make sure that you don't have your shoulder hiked up, but that your shoulder actually feels as if it's dropping and if it's sinking. It's the same actually when we do white crane. You know, I can do, I can do white crane like this, or I can do white crane like this. You know, I can have my shoulder up, or I can have my shoulder sinking. And so we want shoulder sinking. Same thing here. We want to have, let me come closer, we want to have the shoulders sinking, not up. So shoulders sinking here. The next thing I want to remind you of is, uh, this is something we have a lot of trouble with, is when we raise the arm, so the arm movements as we come up. So when we're in single whip, this arm is horizontal. Essentially, you can see it's 90 degrees. And I'm going to come up. And so I'm actually going to come up to the vertical. The angle between my, uh, my arm and my torso really doesn't change as I come up from here. But what does change is I'm going from the palm facing one direction to the palm rotating and facing out. So from here to here, I'm going from palm in to palm out. Good, good. Now what we're going to do, what I want you to do with me is we're going to finish that movement. We start here, comes up, palm rotates, connect the left palm to the right forearm, and keep pushing. So you're going to come to horizontal and go a little bit further, but keep your right arm straight. Don't bend your right arm here. You want to leave that bend for the pull and strike. Make sure that you leave your right arm forward so that you have something to do at the end. So let's do, just forget, you don't worry about the footwork. Let's just do the arm movement. So we've got the arm down, 45 degrees. Straighten the torso, start rotating the arm. When it gets to horizontal, palm is out, touch with the forearm, keep lifting to about here. Keep the right arm straight. Then you're going to open and strike. Yes, very nice, Laura. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Now, let's do that again. So, torso down, arm down. Start lifting, rotate the arm, connect, keep pushing up, separate the arms. The last thing we have to do here is we have to think about the coordination between upper and lower. So, what are the feet? Where do the feet arrive when the arms arrive where? Right? So the, what the coordination that Master Young Jin wants is the following. So I am in this empty stance. You know that I'm going to go to a bow stance. And the first thing I'm going to do is touch with my heel. When the arm is at the top here, I'm going to touch with the heel. This is the coordination point. Then I can shift forward. So let's try that. So I'm forward. Start straightening up the torso, rotate the right hand, connect with the left, keep lifting. When it gets to the top, heel touch. Now shift forward, foot flattens, knee bends, strike. Again. So we're in empty stance. Uh, yep, ball touch, knee, let's see, bottom. Straighten the torso, rotate the right hand, connect with the left, keep pushing, change footwork, step with the arms at the top, keep separating and strike. Now, check your posture. Is your torso vertical? Is your palm opposite your temple? 
is your left arm straight out from your left shoulder in the direction of your feet? Is your nose pointing in the direction of your front foot? And release. The reason I talk about the nose <laughs> is I realized that I, I thought I was, I was looking forward, right? They say like single whip, right? Single whip, you've got to look forward. I was looking forward, but my nose wasn't. My nose was pointing in that direction. So actually my nose needs to be in this direction, not just my eyes. So when you are in this strike position, make sure that your head, if your neck allows, make sure that your nose is actually in the direction, that's the forward direction, direction of the front foot. Are there any questions? Ah, thank you, Rogelio. Uh, you just reminded me of something. Uh, the, the strike here is very simple. So when we, when we start here and we strike, the arm just goes forward. It doesn't go in an arc. It just follows the shortest path to get to the opponent. And the right arm just follows the path to release. So try not to strike up, just straight out. And again, I imagine you're doing the right thing, but I see different things depending on the camera angle. Rogelio, you had a question. Uh, yes, I may might have been doing that wrong. So thank you. Uh, um, two, two questions. Um, my right hand is finishing more two or three fist away from my temple. So should should I try to keep the right arm also in the same plane all the time or it since no the movement, uh, it goes out and in a little bit. Yeah. So for me that's a that's a great question. Um, from, so it's I'm, I'm sorry, say again. Uh, starting from from kneel at sea bottom. Like yeah. that up should be straight up or a bit outwards and then back or uh, that's a great question because I've never really thought about it. Um, so, so here my arm is in line with my shoulder. When I'm lifting and rotating to here, it's still in line with my shoulder step. Then as I pull back, it probably comes in a little bit. But actually, now that I look at the camera, my palm and my shoulder are still in line. And in fact, the, what's happened is because my... My body is opened. It's it's narrowed this distance, this projection of the distance, <laughs> right? So you see, it's gone from this is quite a wide distance, but as I pull, I narrow the distance. So actually, my hand stays in the same plane. I think that's more than one fist away from your temple. Uh, it should. Well, it may well have been, but it should only be one fist. Okay. All right. Um, I had another quick question. As you turn your right hand, I saw in the uh, application that since you're supposed to be grabbing the your opponent's wrist, yes, uh, should your hand be tilting down no. a little bit or just that's that's very well observed. Uh, we don't show that in the form. We okay. just show the palm rotating like this. And just keeping it simple, yeah. We don't we don't actually show the grab. But if you look at the application, there is because you you do actually grab. So you know, if you look at the application, you'll actually see. If you look at somebody doing it, you'll see the thumb coming around. But when we do it, we just keep the thumb in the normal position here. In fact, when you were grabbing Susan, it seemed to me that that the, the hand was pointing down more than up. Uh, it. The hand is oh, coming. Oh, this hand pointing more down? Yeah. The, it the, could... the arm was straight, but the hand was pointing down. That could have been the relative height. Oh, okay. Or I could have been doing it wrong, but there's a uh, eight inch difference in our height, so that would okay, affect well, things. Great. That's that's the point. It should be with the same direction of the arm, right? Yeah, and and actually, uh, you've you've remind you've reminded us of a very good point, Rogelio, which we remind ourselves all the time when you are work you know doing push hands or imagining a you know working with somebody in real life they may be shorter they may be taller than you but when we do the form and we imagine an opponent we imagine somebody the same height as us same size as us 
So that, you know, so when we strike to their shoulder, you know, we strike to our shoulder. When we strike to their neck, we strike to our neck. Thank you. Okay. Good. So let Yes, ma'am. Last question. Okay. You're, you go down, you come up, you turn, and yes. you get so far, and then you go a little bit further. Yes. So you go, you, you're here. You rotate and you go up a little bit more so that the arm is at a slight angle, just like you've got it there, and then it pulls and then you... probably down a bit. Yes, like that. Yeah, and when it's down, the palm is sort of horizontal. It's not like this. It's so, so because your forearm is at an angle, we want the fingertips just for, I think, for looks as much as anything, fingertips horizontal, so there will be a slight bend in the wrist. Yeah. Yes. So let's let's do that a couple of times and then I'll review. Okay, we're at needle uh, the C bottom closing posture. So straighten out the torso, lift the arm, rotate the arm, connect with the left, keep pushing, step out, heel touch, shift weight forward, separate arms. And Back to needle at C bottom ending posture. Straighten the torso, rotate the right arm, connect with the left, keep pushing up, step when it's at the top, shift forward, wait, and open. And again. Lift, rotate, connect, keep lifting, step, separate. Check your posture, shoulder down, elbow down. Torso vertical, chest open to the corner. Okay, let me just watch you do that a couple of times and see if there's anything. It's just two things I want to mention. One is one of the hallmarks of Young style Tai Chi Chuan is that it's a very continuous, steady pace. So there are other styles like Chin style that speeds up and slows down. We keep the same pace throughout and we try and keep it like smooth and open. So when you do this movement, try and make sure that everything keeps moving at the same pace from beginning to end. So don't speed up and slow down, just keep everything constant. The second one, I, the, the only other thing I noticed is, remember that when you lift the right arm, it rotates. So let me be at a slight let me be at an angle like this. So you can see my palm is in. As I lift the arm, it goes palm out. And then I push up, then I separate. Tai Chi Chen.